live on everything so we are okay uh, so today's topic as i said i wanted to talk on the crematoriums why i'm talking on the crematoriums why such a morbid topic um the reason for talking on crematoriums is very simple oh, i'm sorry i'm just going to check things so so um you know the reason i am talking on um, crematorium is because i saw those very disturbing photographs from different parts of india about bodies waiting to go into the crematorium and i remembered the last time i went to the crematorium uh, when my mother passed away a few years ago and a few years before that my father passed away and i realized that many people um, you know not really aware of crematorium rituals and we just do what is told to do and we don't really think about it too much we really don't um and i thought today um i will talk on the concept of death i will talk on the concept of um rebirth the idea of ancestors of pitra um just give me a thumbs up everyone if you can hear me clearly because that is very important for me uh, if you can hear me clearly then you know that will be very useful for me uh i can see some of you all are um, hearing this but i'm still trying to just make sure that everybody is hearing it i want to talk about pitras pretas bhutas vetals all these things um so um let's begin first a little bit on vastu shastra so in vastu shastra one of the things that i you know when people talk about directions so you know what do we call a pandit or a pujari who comes to do the puja in our houses they are called purohit now purohit word comes from purva jo purva ke taraf baithta hai east side so the rishi who sits facing the east even you read the rigveda then you read the first verse of the rigveda the agni is called purohitam the priest that which sits on the right on the facing the eastern side the eastern side is considered where the gods live jahan devta rehte hain hum use purva ki taraf kehte hain so east why east is special because the sun rises in the east very simple so the sun rises in the east and therefore east is very special the second direction which is very special in indian traditions is north uttar uttar ka disha kaise pata chalta hai waha dhruv tara hota hai so the north is very special given a lot of importance by because the north is associated with the pole star pole star doesn't move and therefore is the symbol of stability so growth yaar sunrise happens on the east symbol of growth stability or permanence ya amrit is in the north direction so north is also important east is also important therefore northeast को बहुत इंपॉर्टेंस दिया जाता है हम उसे ईशान कोण कहते हैं सडन दैट्स हाउ ईशान कोण हैपेंस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट सो दैट इज हाउ व्हेन यू आर ड्राइंग वास्तु दे गिव अ लॉट ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंस टू डायरेक्शंस द कार्डिनल एंड द ऑर्डिनल डायरेक्शंस आर गिवन इंपॉर्टेंस सो नाउ आई विल ड्रॉ सो यू हैव गॉट दिस नाइन दिग्गपाल सो दिग्गपाल व्हेन यू गो टू द टेंपल यू विल ऑलवेज सी दीस nine areas facing the nine directions uh and then what is important what becomes interesting is the north the east is associated with indra and the north east the north east is associated with shiva the north is associated with kuber now and then look at this and then vayu is associated with the north east so north mein you have vayu kuber and shiva you see devdut what is the relationship is randomly kyu diya gaya hai sounds very why is kuber the kuber is associated with treasures hoarding is a fat god also wealth and prosperity what is shiva associated with the waxing moon regeneration jab moon is waning it goes and says it sits on shiva's head and regenerates and vayu breath is associated with life 
So life, regeneration, abundance, all these three things represent, what do they represent? Life, growth, vriddhi. Iska opposite kya hoga? Death, decay, disease. So Kuber ke opposite kaun baitta hai? Yamaraj baitta. So they'll say Yamaraj sits on the southern side. Southwest me opposing Vayu. Vayu is the wind, breath. There is Agni sitting. Agni is what is used in the crematorium to eat the dead body, the flesh. Jo sharir ko khane ke liye Agni hota hai. Ye Agni, special kind of Agni, usko bolte hai. Jis Agni se an nahi banta hai. Life doesn't come. It is the, that which eats the flesh. And then opposite Shiva is Shakti, but in a most vile, very dangerous form known as Nritti, also known as Chamunda, associated with ghosts and goblins. So you see Shiva Shakti, but Shakti is here, very dark form. So all negative images over here, Agni that consumes your body, Yamaraj that is the king of the dead, Pitra Lokke Raja, or Yahabe Nritti, who is associated with ghosts and goblins. So all symbols of death on the southern side, all symbols of life on the northern side. Beach mein kya hai? Is taraf Indra hai, to is taraf Varun jota hai. Varun is there, the god of salt water. So fresh water Indra, fresh water, salt water. Fresh water, salt water. And beach mein Brahma. Hai amazing. Look at how Geography is being used. It's a symbolic. It's not to be taken literally. Of course, there are people who will take it literally and I can do nothing about that. As we know, there are people who will never always take things literally. But these are metaphors. Uttar ki disha mein amrit hai, to dakshan ki disha mein mrityu hai. Vaitarni us taraf hai, dakshan ki disha ke mein dekh ke hum pitra ki puja karte hai. Wo pitra ki jaga hai. So the pitras live here. Pitra concept becomes important. And Pitras are the ancestors. And you have the first reference to the Pitras in the Rig Veda itself. The ancient Vedic people worshipped the Devas facing the eastern direction. And facing the southern direction, they would worship the Pitras, the ancestors. So they would say that when you die, you go to Pitra Loka. So Pitra is a very big concept in Hinduism or Pitro ke liye smashan bhumi is in the southern direction. So when they say Lanka is in the south, it doesn't mean South India. It is a metaphor. They are trying to say ki dakshan ke disha mein rakshasha rehte hain, asura rehte hain, pitra rehte hain. Everything that is negative. In the old days, the Vedic people would be considered to be uh, a rich family if they had three fires in the house. The first fire which everybody has is called Grahapatya for the house. Ghar ka jo kitchen ka fire hota hai, usko Grahapatya bolte hai. Uske eastern side mein, on the eastern side of the Grahapatya fire, they would keep a fire for calling the Devatas. Jahan pe yagya hota tha. To wo aavahaniya, jo jisse hum Devatahon ka aavahan karte hai on the eastern side of the household fire. On the southern side of the household fire, you would have a moon-shaped altar for Pitra, Dakshinayana, Pitron ke liye. Or Pitron ke liye, kehte hain ki Pitron ke paas sharir nahi hai, because they don't have a body, they have to be given food. So they are given food in a very special form, in the form of what is called Pind. Pind is a round ball of smashed rice. And it is given to the... the to the ancestors. It's a special thing that is giving to they will be giving in the special. That is the format in which they will give it. And it is also associated with um, sesame, till, kala till. Kala till jaya jata hai. So sesame is very important. India was famous for sesame. Sesame oil used to be exported by the Harappans to uh, Mesopotamia and to Egypt. So, our here, the most India And til, makar sankranti. But it is a red till. Kala till ka laddu, 
ज्यादातर हम पितरों को देते हैं आजकल वो पीपल डोंट मेक दैट डिविजन बट सफेद तेल वॉज ट्रेडिशनली गिवन टू देवताज एंड काला तेल वॉज गिवन टू पित्र पितरों को वो दिया जाता है फिर कुछ धागा दिया जाता है फॉर क्लॉथ एंड वाई इज दिस होल थिंग इज वॉट वी विल डिस्कस टूडे पितरों के साथ एक बहुत ही कॉम्प्लेक्स मिथोलॉजी इवॉल्व होता है जिसके बारे में हमें जानकारी अथर्व वेद में मिलता है ग्रह सूत्रों में मिलता है सो द वेदिक लिटरेचर कंटेन्स अ लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन मनुस्मृति टॉक्स अबाउट श्राद्ध के बारे में अंत्येष्टि के बारे में पित्र पिंड दान सपिंड दान ये बहुत रिचुअल्स होते हैं सम ऑफ यू ऑल मे बी फेमिलियर विथ इट सम ऑफ यू ऑल मे नॉट बी फेमिलियर विथ इट सम बिलीव इट सम डोंट बिलीव इट इट वेरीज राइट बट दिस इज वॉट वी विल डू सो द फर्स्ट थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इज हाउ द बॉडी वॉज इमेजिन हाउ डिड एंशंट इंडियंस इमेजिन द बॉडी is a question to ask how did we imagine uh, our bodies now that part is something to be understood so oops when i try to be very creative i get scared oh i try some but you know the way in a sword is kept inside a scabbard यू नो तलवार को हम म्यान के अंदर रखते हैं तो ये माना जाता है कि हमारा शरीर एक म्यान जैसा है और उसके अंदर एक आत्मा बैठी हुई है सो दल्ड डेज दे वुड लुक एट अ बॉडी एंड से वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन लिविंग एंड अ नॉन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड ए नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इट लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म इज हंग्री उसे फूड चाहिए और वो डरा हुआ है वो भयभीत है क्योंकि उसके अंदर जीव है द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जीव इमर्जेस ये जीव शरीर के अंदर बैठा हुआ है तो उस जीव को हम देही कहते हैं रेसिडेंट ऑफ देह सो जीव इज रिसाइडिंग इनसाइड द बॉडी और देहांत का मतलब है अंत ऑफ द देह नॉट ऑफ द जीव जीव नहीं मरता है जीव इज इमोर्टल देह द बॉडी इज मॉर्टल so it is like a bird inside a cage and when the person dies the bird flies away but it is not so simple and these ideas are perhaps even pre vedic we find them in lots of stories the belief is ki jab sharir jab mrit aur wo mandrati rehti hai near the body so when a person dies the body is lifeless but the soul is not left the body this is called preet isko atma nahi kahenge ise preet kahenge to atma aur preet mein kya hai difference kya hai atma is wise so it is in touch with the divine the preet is not in touch with the divine it is covered with memories and emotions and all kinds of desires and therefore is unable to reach divinity so jeev atma parmatma tak pahunch nahi pati hai uske bare ird gird uske emotions hai uske desires hai jise hum karana sharir kehte hain aur wo usse tadap raha hai now in order this is belief that if it this has to be reborn because now it is not got a body it is out of the body it has to step one make a journey to vaitarani which is the river separating the land of the living and the dead use paar karke use yamlok jana hai wahan yamraj raja hai unke sath rehna hai wahan chitragupt apne hisab kitab ke anusar decide karenge aapka punarjanm kab hoga fir aapka punarjanm hoga wapas aap jeevit rahenge wapas ek sharir milega fir wapas aap jeete rahenge again you will have a body and at the end of the body again you will die and again if you still have karma attached to you you will be reborn again and again and again isliye jab aapko zindagi diya jata hai you should use this life to destroy all those negative energies that trap you in the life and death cycle ise moksha kehte hain 
लेकिन ज़्यादातर लोग मोक्ष नहीं करना चाहते हैं वी बिकॉज मोक्ष पाना बहुत मुश्किल है इट मीन्स गिविंग अप डिज़ायर्स गिविंग अप हंगर गिविंग अप आर फियर्स इट रिक्वायर्स अ लॉट ऑफ इनर जर्नी और किसको नहीं करना है हम को बोलते भैया भगवान का ना, नाम लेंगे और सब प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाएगा बिकॉज इट इज़ अ डिफिकल्ट जर्नी सो मोस्ट ह्यूमन बींग्स वी गेट ट्रैप्ड इन आर मटीरियल वर्ल्ड एंड दीज सिम्बल्स डेट क्लिन सो प्रेत को बोलते हैं कि मरने के बाद इट इज इट इज हॉवरिंग अराउंड द डेड बॉडी ना इफ यू हैव सीन द फ्यूनरल रिचुअल द ब्राह्मण प्रीस्ट हु कम्स वुड नेवर रिफर टू द डेड बॉडी एज योर फादर और योर मदर और उनका नाम लेके दिल से ये डेड बॉडी को लेके आओ दिल रिफर टू द बॉडी इन अ नेगेटिव वे इन अ ट्रेडिशनल इंडियन फैमिली द डेड बॉडी आफ्टर डेथ हैज टू बी क्रिमेटेड वेरी दो मुहूर्त के अंदर ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा उसी दिन चौबीस घंटे के अंदर द प्रॉब्लम इज इफ़ यू डाई इन अमेरिका और यू डाई इन अदर कंट्रीज दे कीप द बॉडी एम्बाम्ड एंड एंड दे कीप इट फॉर लाइक टेन डेज ट्वेंटी डेज एंड देन ओनली दे विल मे बी क्रिमेटेड क्रिमेशन इज नॉट अलाउड इन ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ अमेरिका एंड यूरोप दे प्रिफर बेरियल राइट्स बट इन इंडिया क्रिमेशन इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दे फोर यू डू इट वेरी फास्ट एंड वेन द क्रिमेशन इज डन इट इज़ नॉट दी एंड ऑफ द स्टोरी जब क्रिमेश जब अंत्येष्टि होता है शरीर को हमेशा फेसिंग द साउथ लैंड ऑफ द डेड रखा जाता है इन द माउथ दे विल बेद द बॉडी वंस बिकॉज ऑफ लव एंड एनर्जी बट रियली दर इज द बॉडी हैज़ नो मीनिंग इट इज़ ओवर बट सम पीपल विल बेद द बॉडी दे विल पुट इन द माउथ गंगा जल दे विल पुट तुलसी दे विल पुट चावल के दाने दे विल पुट सेसमी सीड्स ऑल दीज आर फॉर इमोशनल रीजन एंड देन दे विल क्रिमेट द डेड फिर मुखाग्नि दिया जाता है फिर कपाल क्रिया किया जाता है विच इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट स्लाइटली मोर डिस्टर्बिंग रिचुअल्स वेयर द डेड बॉडी वेन यू द डेड बॉडी यू ऑलवेज गो अराउंड इट इन द काउंटर क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन नेवर इन द क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन ऑलवेज इन द काउंटर क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन एंड देन दे विल ब्रेक द स्कल ऑफ द बर्निंग बॉडी बिकॉज यहाँ से बोलते हैं कि प्रेत निकलता है वन ऑफ द अदर रीजन इज बिकॉज इफ द स्कल वॉज नॉट डिस्ट्रॉयड देन इट वुड बी टेकन अवे बाय द कपालिकाज एंड यू डेंट वॉन्ट योर लव्ड वंस हैड बींग टेकन बाय दिस कपालिकाज वुड वॉन्डर इन द क्रेमेटोरियम्स एस्पेशली इफ यू बिलोंग टू सर्टन कम्युनिटीज दे वुड टेक दीज बिकॉज दे बिलीव इट हैज मैजिकल पावर्स दे वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल द प्रेतज आई डोंट नो इफ यू हर सीन दी स्टोरीज वेयर सोसरस आर ट्राइंग टू कैप्चर प्रेतज बिकॉज प्रेत्स आज कंसिडर टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पावर दे आर नॉट ट्रैप्ड बाय द बॉडी दे डोंट हैव अ बॉडी but they are not completely dead because they have not entered the land of the dead they are in the land of the living and these are called the pratas so to become a pitra is a entire process you have to go through an entire process in order to become a pitra this is why shraad is performed shraad is performed to transform the preta into pitra do you believe it or not it's up to you but this is the ritual the first ritual is for the first 10 days they perform every day where the preta gets a temporary body so he gets his nose eyes hands legs torso over the first 10 days that is why the main shraddha is conducted 13 days after the ritual this is the process by which they get a new body a temporary body that enables them to um I'll go to the other world and this is the reason why many of the brahmin communities will read something called the garuda purana and that it is full of very frightening details how the body suffers how the body has to go through this complicated journey through the water through these various forests full of suffering and misery the land of the dead of course you can see that these kind of rituals many people know that these are rituals designed to frighten the living so that they give good dakshinas because upay hamesha hoga ki agar aapne itna paisa diya ye puja kiya wo puja kiya to aapke jo pitra log jaane samay itna takleef nahi hoga so it's a nice ritual and you know it enables people who business is death so there are people who have to deal with deaths you know there are these pandits whose job is only to perform shraddha there are the people who live in the crematorium whose whole life revolves around. and unfortunately in our society people who are associated with funeral rituals were considered to be untouchables even the brahmins who perform these rituals are considered to be the ju- uh, inferior brahmins to the other brahmins who perform wedding rituals so in our country in a way this is very closely related to um, um kind of ritual so you know this is something that you have to deal with you go any one you just go to any crematorium and you will see what will happen uh, how the brahmins very few brahmins are wise enough to understand suffering and bereavement 
I've been lucky. I've met those Brahmins also are very clear. And then there are, of course, the ones who exploit the situation. So we have all kinds of people in every community. Uh, we have to hopefully meet the nicer people. And I guess if you're a cockroach, you will always meet negative people. And if you're a swan, you'll meet nice people, as you can see. So uh, I guess cockroaches will also suffer a lot when they're going to a, a cross by Ternino. But anyway, they will enjoy the suffering. But the swans, you know, those who have done less karmas and who's happy and who have always helped people, I guess they always have this, this journey towards the other life is um, always uh, interesting. So uh, these rituals are complex rituals, these, uh, the sapinda rituals. The sapinda rituals, um, you know, uh, normally there are three ancestors who are worshipped. So there is uh, your the grandfather, you worship your father, uh, your grandfather and your great grandfather. Now, when someone dies, he has to take the position. So, there are only three positions after which you become a Vishwadeva. So, Pindas always jump for three generations. So, when one person dies, he becomes generation one. So, the person in generation one goes to generation two, the person in generation two goes to generation three, and the person in generation three goes to the nameless ancestors who are also called Vishwadevas. So, that is the process in which you do it, and there is an entire way in which the the newly dead becomes a member of the triad of Pitras and the oldest dead, that one who is the third Pitra, becomes the Vishwadeva. So these rituals were and Vedic rituals. So they are very old rituals associated. In the Vedic period, they believed in three worlds. They believed in the earth, the atmosphere, the sky, and then the fourth realm where the Vishwadevas live. And therefore these rituals, so you, when a person dies, he has to become level one, then he has to become level two. Um, when third level becomes level three. So there are these rituals where the three pindas are done for the old dead and the fresh pinda, which is cylindrical, is done for the newly dead. Then the four pindas are mixed together. Then the new pindas are created. So it's a complex ritual in which the step one is, of course, giving them a subtle body, the one who's died recently. The step two is giving him the right position in the Pitra Loka. And the entire ritual takes, first it takes the first uh, 10 days, then it takes the first year. So you have every month rituals being taking place. It also depends on how rich you are. Everybody can't afford these rituals. Not everybody can do daily rituals after a person dies for 10 days, 12 days. So you do abbreviated versions. One of the unique things about Hinduism is that rituals can expand and contract depending on your economic status. It's as simple as that. So for the very rich people, there are complicated rituals because you know why? You have earned so much of money, you might as well give the money to all the people in the society before you die. And those who don't have so many means, they'll have simpler rituals, so lesser transactional of wealth. So it's, you know, sort of managed that way. And uh, the rituals involved really giving away a lot of things. Uh, I believe these rituals were pre-Brahminical, pre-Vedic, these existed before and gradually enter the Vedic world slowly because it's very briefly mentioned in the Griha Sutras and then it expands itself. Of course, over time, as I said, it becomes a major source of income only for Brahmins. Um, and uh, in, for example, in UP side, there are special Brahmins known as Mahapatras who performed uh, funeral rituals and who would get all the goods of the dead. And they were considered to be the lower Brahmins, the, the Brahmins who were involved in marriage rituals did not give their daughters to these families. So it's a difficult life. Uh, um, while the, the community which took care of the dead bodies, the domes, uh, were considered to be untouchables and they were treated very badly and they were only allowed to live in the crematorium. They were rich because they would get all the gifts for taking care and they were only important during the time of death. Otherwise, nobody cares for them. They would be called when somebody died in the house to take the bodies away, etc. So these are, of course, the caste things which you know, some Hindus don't want to talk about. But India has, you have to talk about the caste system. And that was an old practice and we will now move away. We will give away these practices, hopefully in time, uh, and rise above it. And if somebody says there's no caste system in India, please check how many of their relatives live or aspire to work in the crematorium. Because when we look at the crematorium, it's an inauspicious place. Ashob hai. Ghar mein aate samay, aap pehle nahate ho. And there is no trace of the body kept. Then after a few days, you take the ash and put it in the river because you want a second birth. We don't keep any symbols of the dead 
in the house in the traditional families. But now rich people, kings would, you know, wherever the cremation would take place, they would build a chhatri, especially amongst the Rajputs. They would build chhatris wherever the cremation took place to remember the dead. Um, or they would put hero stones and hero markers. Nowadays, politicians, when they die, they build memorials to them. But traditionally in India, a king would never have a memorial because you don't remember the dead. You want them to become pitras. If you make statues of dead people, they will say, usko punar janam nahi milega, wo atak jata hai. Memories matter jate hai and they don't move on. So in India, we don't say rest in peace. We say move in peace. Aage badho, aage badho. Keep moving in peace, not stay in one place. While if you see in Islamic cultures and Christian cultures, the, there are tombs built for the dead. And even after 100 years, 1000 years, you remember where they died, where they were buried. Their name is also kept in Hinduism. That was not the traditional practice. Only now. But by the way, many, many Hindus don't cremate the dead. There are many Hindus in India, especially in South India, who bury the dead. They will bury the dead and uh, it is there in many communities. Uh, many Gurujis, when they die, are not cremated. They are buried. They are buried in the seated position. And they are buried facing the south. They are covered with salt. And wherever they are buried, a tulsi plant is placed on top of them. In fact, it is believed in ancient times, people were made to sit in a put placed in a pot. And they were buried under the ground, covered with salt, and tulsi plant was covered. And perhaps, perhaps, and this is of course controversial, nobody knows for sure, there is no proof of it, that the old practice of having tulsi around the house represented the old women who died in the house. And they were kept, they were called the Gauris, the Gauri Pujas were happened. So um, the tulsi was associated with Gauri and with women who died in the household were buried vertically in the house. Now, burial was a very popular practice to claim the land. So, apni zameen ke upar hi aap apni body ko rakhte ho. But over time, when the doctrine of detachment became important, then people would um, cremate the dead and put the ashes so that there is no attachment. Um, so, you burn, so fire is used and then water is used to dissolve and there is no connection uh, left with the land of the living. So, that was the so there were two schools of thought, the burial school of thought and then there was the cremation school of thought. And uh, then you have, of course, when you die, not does everybody want to die. So, you know, every some people die natural death. You live a full life, you live a happy life and then you die of old age, which is a good life. But some people die unnaturally through accident at an early age, through disease and they don't want to die. They want to stay back on the earth. So then these people are considered to be um, living on earth. There's bhuts. Because they don't want to go to the next world. They don't want to travel to the other side. And some of them become pisachas. They chart. And pisachas are those pretas which will um, enter your body and they will possess you. So they become, uh, they enter your body and they drive you mad and they give you mental disease, physical disease. You don't eat, you don't drink, you become strange and become weird and therefore exorcism is done. So pisach is associated with pretas which enter the body. Then there are the pretas who create trouble around you. They close the door, shut the door, frighten you, make your life miserable because they are unhappy. They are not. They are trapped. They want to go to the other side, but they can't go. So the pretas are classified into two or three groups. One group is they want to go to the other side, but they can't go. So for them, special shradhas or shanti homas are performed so that they can go to the other side. Then there are pretas who want to stay back and take revenge on people who treated them badly and they become pisachas and they become scary things. Even there are rituals to get rid of them. Uh, you know, uh, Hanuman Chalisa is usually read by people who get scared because, you know, they bother people. So these are these beliefs and systems. So Bhut Kal Sejo Judai who are stuck in the past and are not willing to move ahead are called Bhut. Because they don't want to move ahead. They don't want to go to the Bhavishya. They want to stuck in the Bhutkal mein hai. Like many people you'll see even in your friend circle, they're trapped in some old stories. 10,000 years ago, India mein kya hua tha? 8,000. So in a way, they're like Bhuts only. They're stuck in the past. They're not moving forward. They don't go into the future. So there are these things that you see. So you see uh, different kinds of Bhuts are there. Those who don't want to go to the next life, those who want to go to the next life but he can't. And therefore there is something called Sarva Pritra Shrad which is performed once a year for all the ancestors so that they move on happily to the next life. So that's the fundamental difference between Western thought and Indian thought. Um, who will die and who, who wants to go to the next life. The whole concept of next life. There is no judgment day. So, you know, the Egyptians had Judgment Day, the Greeks had Judgment Day, the Zoroastrians had Judgment Day, Christians have Judgment Day, 
Muslims have Judgment Day, Hindus don't have Judgment Day, Buddhists don't have Judgment Day. There is no concept of Judgment Day. There is at best an accounting which takes place. In Pitraloka, the ancestors are hanging upside down, um, hoping to be reborn. Therefore, Rishis like Agastya get dreams when they don't produce children, that if you don't get married and don't produce children, then you will not... Uh, you have to do pitra ready, you have to repay debts to your ancestors so that they can be reborn and unless they are reborn, you will not get a chance to be reborn. You know why is Bhishma Pitamaha, you know he's called Deva Vrat and why is called Bhishma? I mean I kept wondering, you know, he says I will not get married, I will not produce children. So, so many people don't get married and produce children, you know. So what is Bhishma Pratigya about it? The Bhishma Pratigya about it is that he is not, if he does not marry and produce children, he does not repay his debt to his ancestors. Pitra Rin se wo mukt nahi hote. Jab Pitra Rin se tum mit nahi hoge, to tum Pitra Lok se tumhe kabhi mukti nahi milegi. Isliye tum, you are trapped in the land of the dead just like Yamraj. To Bhishma ko kehte, he is trapped in the land of the dead. That's why Bhishma Pratigya. And the word put and putri means jo apne purvajon ko put namak narak se liberate mukti dilata hai usse hum putta putri that's why this obsession in India with marriage and children marriage and children enable you to prepay the debt of ancestors but there is a way if you don't want to marry and you don't want to produce India mein hamesha ek upai hota hai we are famous one of the greatest things about India is that everything has an upai a bypass system isliye hum ek road banate hai to hum uske bagal mein hum bypass bana denge we don't like roads we like bypasses so bypass is simple you adopt a child you adopt a people who have no parents and you take care of them and that's how you become Pitra uh, Se Mukt so you don't have to produce your own child if you take care of other people's children you are free from the debt you perform your own shrad and you say that listen I'm not going to produce any children but I will take care of other people's children and by that I am liberated from the cycle of debt so give your property to other people's children that's it Pitra Se Mukt so it's very simple we should we are Indians are very good at all that so if anybody says no Garuda Purana is the most important text in the world they're foolish they're not being Hindu uh, they are just being some western things ki nahi lakir ke fakir wo sab western concept hai hamare bahar india mein sab fluid hai sab kuch chalta hai har cheez badalta hai har cheez ka upay hota hai so that is the thing we have found a way to be practical about these things and um, you know um, so somebody just told me Dev, that today we're going to talk on deep time tales please don't talk about pitra 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 it's so patriarchal because they all you should also talk about matra because pitra is fathers forefathers can we talk about mothers so I will end on a positive note. I will, the remaining part of the session, I will talk on mothers, not on fathers. Because, you know, the, the Rig Veda, whether you accept it or not, is a patriarchal document. Except for cockroaches, the whole world knows it's a patriarchal document meant for fathers, meant for sons. It is Indra, Varuna, Agni, uh, Soma, very few goddesses. There's very, very, very few goddesses. In fact, the words for goddesses are really common nouns, not proper nouns. Uh, goddesses are very few like this Usha and this Aranyani, the goddess of the forest, the goddess of the dawn. So goddess, really um, the goddess becomes important in India only after the Tantric Parampara. We keep saying there are Rishikas in the Vedas and all that, there are like 1%, 2%. Actually numerically counting, uh, hand on my heart, the Vedic culture is highly patriarchal. They value women only because marriage is important and children are important and household is important and kitchen is important. But women are not central. Women become central in the Tantric traditions, in the Agama traditions. Agama traditions, Tantric traditions, which are the opposite of Vedic traditions, which are the Nigama traditions. And the importance of women starts emerging much, much later. And the earliest importance, even the Buddha does not give importance to women at all. Uh, he gives women, he allow, makes a big uh, revolution where he allows women to become bhikkunis, nuns. But, you know, basically even the Jains, most of the monastic communities, can, most of them are women. So if you go in the Jain community, most of the nuns, most of the monks are women. But they don't control. The dominating head is always a man. So patriarchy is in India. If anybody says they are not patriarchal, they are lying, complete liars. They are, uh, we are a completely patriarchal community. But, the grama de, you know, when you look at the, some of the desi paramparas, some of the loka paramparas, the women are considered the most important. In fact, Buddhism and Jainism says when you are reborn, women will be reborn as men and only when they become men will they get moksha. Can you believe it? That was the sentence used. That you have to be reborn as a man in order to get moksha. 
so these are sentences let let's call a spade a spade uh, in the 21st century we don't carry the burden of lies but um, you know the unique thing how to know it is a matriarchal culture what is the unique thing is pottery so when you talk of mothers you know uh, hindu dharma in the buddhist also in jains also the pot is considered very important pot is the symbol of the goddess of women and doing puja of the pot is really doing puja of the feminine principle why is the pot important it is the world's first invention we invent the, the earliest jo adi manav hota hai na wo sabse bada uska invention wo pehle hathiyar banata hai patthar se stone se he starts using weapons but when, you know he can't carry water he carry drinks water like all animals go to the water to drink it is only when he invents the pot that he realizes a great invention he can carry food he can carry water he can carry fire this pot is the most important invention of humans this pot garbh isko isliye garbh bolte hain kalash bolte hain the pot jisko indian lota kehte hain is one of the greatest inventions of india and if you look at the pot it is shaped like this it is spherical brahmand ke jaise hota hai it is circular in shape it contains water they contain grain it contains sprouts and in all auspicious occasions you will cover it you will fill it with leaves and flowers and coconut and mango and these things you will and you will worship the pot jab kalash puja hoti hai to aap devi devtaon ko aavahan karte hain kalash ke roop क्योंकि कलश में खाना होता है अन्न होता है एंड देफ द कलश पूजा जब होता है इट इज वेन मात्र इज बींग वर्शिप द मदर इज बींग वर्शिप एंड इमेजिन इन इंडिया पीपल कीप सेंग द ट्रेडिशनली टेम्पल्स आर द सोर्स ऑफ ग्रेट बट इवन बिफोर टेम्पल्स आप देवी देवताओं को अगर किसके घर में सत्यनारायण पूजा हुआ है यू नो दैट द हाउस इज एम टी देर इज नथिंग देर इन समी पुट अ पॉट देर पुट सम राइस ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट देर पुट अ पॉट इन द पॉट देर पुट वॉटर देन देर पुट um some uh, grains and sprouts then they will put some mango leaves then they will put a coconut on top of it put haldi on top of it sindoor on top of it maybe a mask on top of it and then transform it into lakshmi they will say the goddess come and then the, or they will do even satyanarayan puja also ye ganpati hai or they will say ye vishnu hai to our mind our mind can transform an object into a god and we'll worship it we'll chant the name of the god 999 times we'll read a story about the god and at the end of the puja then you'll give the god food you'll give clothing after the god's avahan is done so you don't yagya we talk about yagya but you can do it without fire with water in a pot so kalash ke madhyam se devataon ko bulana hai unko khana dena hai unko kapde dena hai aap unko sugandh dete ho dhoop dweep dete ho you give them everything that you want then you thank them then you say will you satisfy my wishes and remember exchange pehle do uske baad lo that is the indian principle you first give things and then you ask for good fortune and after that you will do visarjan say tata bye bye you will tell the god to go away and after that you will remove puja ki samagri there is no trace of the ritual left and then you put it in the river you put it everything is put in the river these are organic things nowadays of course everybody is using plastic and plaster of paris which is unfortunately polluting the rivers but these are organic things to jahan pe bhi jao is purna kumbh kehte hain the and that is the symbol of motherhood people used to worship the mother in india and it is something that we don't understand no no culture in islam motherhood nobody talks about mother you know and people talk about mother mary in the catholic church it was big they'll say but no she's not actually the goddess she's just venerated as the mother of god doesn't mean she's a goddess it's almost as if you are difficulty to include the goddess in the divine pantheon but in india goddesses are very very important um uh, the goddess is you know both you know people keep using you know kali is a form of goddess she is the wild goddess of the forest and when the forest is transformed into a field it becomes gauri the controlled goddess isliye kali ke baal khule hote hain aur gauri ke baal bandhe hote hain so this connection of kali and gauri so who is kali is she the mother or is she the daughter because and that is the question that is asked to brahma ki is the goddess your mother or is your daughter and he says when she is the forest she is the mother when she is the field she is the daughter that means humanity is born of the forest and then humanity creates the field 
So nature is our mother, culture is our daughter. And this is how the story is told. So the goddess is both mother and daughter. So you worship her as a daughter. Young girls are dressed as goddesses to remind us that the goddess is both mother and daughter. And this idea is, in fact, it is mother, daughter, sister. So when you will talk about the uh, Hindu trinity, they say Brahma's daughter is the goddess. Shiva's wife is the goddess. Vishnu's sister is the goddess. This story is popular in southern traditions. In the southern traditions, in Tamil temples, the goddess is always shown as the sister of Vishnu, the daughter of Brahma and the wife of Shiva. And the pot, therefore, is worshipped. You know, the, when you read the Jain scriptures, amongst all the Tirthankars, Mallinath has been given the symbol of a pot because they say Mallinath in some traditions was a woman. And he's the only female Tirthankara. The Didgambars don't accept this idea, but the Shwetambars say that she is a goddess. She's a, I mean, she's a woman. She was born with a female body, but she became a Tirthankara. And there is at least one statue that we have of Mallinatha, and the symbol is the pot. So the pot becomes a very, very... And the pot is important in Buddhism too. When Buddha is starving, the lady Sujata comes carrying a kumbha full of kheer, milk and... Uh, or rice and gives him food to eat. So Amrita Kalasha or the pot of bounty is a symbol in Buddhism also. It's a symbol in Jainism also. It contains in Jainism the symbol, you know, the Ikshavaku. Ikshavaku word comes, the Rishabhanath belongs to the Ikshavaku clan and they say that the, he taught human beings how to make juice from the sugar cane. So Ikshavaku. And that sugar cane he collected in a pot which became Amrita Kalasha. So the pot becomes very important. And therefore, even during funeral rituals, the pot is used. The pot is used by, um, uh, if, you know, when the body is taken away from the house, uh, somebody will take fire from the house in a pot. Because ghar ka hi agni jata hai, the same fire that fed you is going to cremate you. And that fire is taken to the crematorium. The pot containing water, you move in the clockwise direction around the dead body three times. And each time they will break the pot with a single hole and water comes out. Why three holes? Because they are the three bodies that you will slowly give up in order for the preta to leave. The, the sthula sharira or the dravya sharira is flesh. The sukshma sharira which is mind. The third is the karana sharira which really clings to you, doesn't really go away. And then near the head, you will throw the pot over the shoulder and it breaks. And when the pot breaks, it represents the breaking of the body and the soul, the preta leaving. And then through the pindas, it acquires a new body. And through a series of pindadanas and pinda rituals, it gradually makes a journey across the Vaitarni to Yamaloka, Pitraloka and through various narakas and svargas eventually to its next life. So moving in peace, even there the pot plays a very important role. So the pot plays a very important role at the time of birth, that is the mother's uterus, garbha, and that becomes the pot which is also associated at the time of death. So whenever you see a pot, remember we are talking about the feminine principles. Without the pot, a house cannot be designed. During wedding ceremonies, you will have the pot. Pot plays a very important role in uh, so when the Amrita Manthan takes place, the uh, nectar of immortality comes in a pot. So pot is such an important idea in many tribal communities and folk traditions. They also use the basket made of winnowing grass, blades of grass. The basket is important, soup is important, which is the winnowing fan is important. These are all symbols of Lakshmi. These are all symbols of the goddess and the mother. Remember, mother is very, very important. The gods, you know, are considered to be immortal because they're not, you know, if you're not, are you born of the mother or not born of the mother is a very important concept in mythology. So if you have a mother, you are called Yonija, born of the, so Krishna is born of Kaushalya, uh, of Yash uh, Devaki, uh, Ram is born of Kaushalya. Because they are born from the Yoni, they have to die. They have to experience death. Say, Mrityu lok mein pravesh, aap maa ke Yoni se karte ho. 
So the mother gives birth to you through her uterus and then she nourishes you with her breasts and therefore you are in the world. So Ram and Krishna are avatars because they are mortal. They are born of a human body and therefore they have to die. And although we don't talk about the death of Ram and Krishna, we think it's Ashub. But Ram's death in, in the river Sarayu, Krishna's death in the forests, outside Prabhasa is life and death because they are avatars, they are mortal. Vishnu and Shiva are considered Swayambhu, self-created, not born of the Yoni and therefore no concept of death. So the female form was associated with life and death and the cycle of life and death, samsara, while the male form was associated with Atma which never dies, Jiva which never dies. So Deha Dehi, Deha is visualized as feminine and they, he is visualized as masculine. So all of us have a body, male or female, all of you, everybody who's listening to me, we have a body. This is considered the male principle, the female principle and the jiva which makes us alive, which makes us hungry, which makes us frightened. That is the male principle, the masculine principle. So we are all containing the male and the female principle. We have the pot and we have the staff, the ikshu, the staff, the danda. Uh, more on that on another episode, maybe next Friday I will talk about the male symbols a little bit more, female symbols. Today, of course, we will focus on the uh, idea of death and we spoke about, what did we discuss? Today we discussed about death, we discussed about Pitraloka, we discussed about Pretas, we discussed about Pitras, Bhuts, Pret, we also discussed on something auspicious, the Garbha the Kalasha, the Lota, the Pot, the Purna Kumbha and how it plays a role in the beginning of our life and in the end of our lives. These thoughts which I share with you are meant for people who have the ability to expand their mind with critical ideas. This is not meant for cockroaches. I'm sorry, I keep repeating this because when people say we don't agree with you, I'm like, do not attend my sessions. My sessions are meant for people with some degree of intelligence. For the rest, there is the Guru agree with him. You don't have to agree with me. This is my research which I share with you in order to feel positive. And I want to feel positive despite the lockdown, despite the misery. And please spare a thought for all those people who are dying and who are not even getting the dignity of being told that they die of a proper death certificate, proper all these complicated bureaucratic things that don't allow their journey into Vaitarani. And everybody who prevents the dead from making their journey safely and happily to Vaitarani, you'll pay a price if you believe in karma. If you don't, it won't. So see you next time, next Friday, Saturday. I will see you again at 4 p.m. And um, hopefully you will make your journey transition from cockroach to swan. To the person who wants to expand the mind, learn new things from our great culture and is not trying to defend it because Bhagwan ko chauki dari ki koi avashakta nahi hai. Bhagwan is quite capable of protecting himself as we all know. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next week.